Private Resort's a 1985 teen sex comedy from director George Bowers. In case you were unsure as to what kind of movie this was going to be, it opens with an extended butt parade. Hey, Gunther's in the pool! Jack and Ben are on vacation and can hardly contain themselves. Are we sure this guy isn't an undercover cop posing as a teenager? That's not Dodie Goodman. Jack tries to be slick, but fails. I don't know, man, I think he got a shot. 3 minutes, 55 seconds to boobs. That night, the guys go to the bar. I remember those jackets. Always made me think the person was going fishing. Just then, the hotel security, Reeves, tries to throw them out until they prove they're staying at the hotel. The guys have attracted the attention of the mall squad. <laughs> Teehee, I like drinking with two straws. In walks the waitress, Patty. Ben immediately falls in love. Wow, just think, in a year, she'll be really bored and working on a space station. Um, not yet, sir, but we have our best computer expert working on it right now. The next day, is this whole movie just going to be filmed outside next to the pool? But you ought to know by now you're talking to me. The best. You know what they call me? The rug? The maestro. That's right, the maestro. The maestro is on the phone with a client. He's trying to scam the rich Mrs. Rowlings out of her diamond necklace. Ben seems to suffer from Corey Haim syndrome. He bumps into Patty, who gets warned by her boss that she shouldn't fraternize with the guests. Ben then spends the afternoon totally not being a creep by watching Patty work. Jack reminds him what they're there for. Butts! The guys hit on Bobby Sue. She's got kind of a matronly thing going on. Ben finds a room key, and Jack assumes she left it for them. Ah, not watching. Been there. Wow. Wonder how many more times the maestro is going to be hitting the groin. Oh, my groin. The guys let themselves into Bobby Sue's room and Jack immediately gets undressed. This Pirates of the Caribbean prequel is not what I was expecting. Somehow I think Johnny Depp leaves this movie off his resume. Ben goes to leave, but Jack tells him to stay. That's her. You tell her I'm in here. I'll be in the bedroom, okay? My word is that presumptuous! My creep meter is spiking pretty much this entire film. Ben goes to the door and, uh-oh, it's Bobby Sue's husband, the maestro. Wait, why was he knocking at his own hotel room? The maestro thinks Ben is there to cut his toupee, I mean hair. So, naturally, hijinks ensue. Bobby Sue shows up and gets undressed. Was everyone a peeping Tom in the 80s? Bobby Sue finds Jack naked in the closet. Jack hides under the blankets with Bobby Sue to avoid the maestro. Incoming hairy leg joke. You know, I hate to tell you, baby, but you need a shave. Ben tries to leave and gets into an altercation with the real barber. Bobby Sue distracts her husband, so Jack can sneak out. The maestro comes out and oh no. The maestro sees his hair, so now he has to murder Ben. No teen sex comedy is complete without a wacky chase sequence. The guys get away and end up where else? In an aerobics class. The maestro tries to sneak in, but gets kicked out. Now with the maestro gone, Jack falls in love with the girl in front of him. tee The guy from A Nightmare on Elm Street is staring at my lady bits. Reeves tries to reprimand Bikini Girl for her attire. I'm sorry, ma'am. You're going to need to put those butt cheeks away. It's really just a thinly veiled excuse for the movie to do this. And also this. Reeves goes into the elevator to engage in a bad overacting off. I can no longer tolerate insolence from a house dick, a pervert, a phantom Rafmal. You trying to insult me, Nagel? Yes. I'm warning you. Go ahead. Don't say it. Don't say it. Make my day. Oh, why? I love how these movies always make the adults in charge complete buffoons. The guys retreat to the pool where Patty's working. Jack takes off so Ben can hit on her. Dad. Ben sees the maestro, so he ducks under the table. While under there, he asks Patty on a date. After some prodding, she agrees. Dave Coulier attacks her and warns her to stay away from him or she's fired. Back in the elevator. So when are these two just going to have sex? Hey, it's stereotypical ladies surfer punk dude. Whoa, dude. The elevator gets overcrowded, so the barber and Reeves escape. How did he lose his pants? Jack sees the hot girl from earlier and asks the bellboy what her name is. He says her name's Dana, and if he wants to get with her, he needs to impress her grandmother by being a doctor or a lawyer or some kind of super doctor-lawyer hybrid. 
80s Johnny Depp also had a serious case of Corey Haim mouth. Jack fools Mrs. Rawlings into thinking he's a doctor. Oh, you must be that Doogie Hauser I've heard so much about. Dana comes over to meet Jack. Again. Wait, how's her hair dry? Mrs. Rowlings sets him up on a date with Dana, but they have to double with her cousin Shirley. Jack convinces Ben to go out with Shirley so he can get with Dana alone. He agrees, but he has to leave before 11.30 so he can meet up with Patty. Where's Shirley? Uh, she'll be right out. Oh, please let it be Shirley Hempel. Shirley, of course, isn't all there. My cousin studies the teachings of uh, Bobby Rabinani. That's Baba Ramanana. Jack and Dana leave, so Ben has to deal with Shirley. Ben wants to leave too, but Jack makes him an offer. A couple of these will put her in heat. Aspirin. Quaaludes, the love drug. What? When in doubt, roofies. These are supposed to be the heroes. I guess lies and drugs are okay if the guys are cute. The maestro tries to dupe Mrs. Rawlings, but she forgot her hearing aid. Such a lovely flower like you here, my dear. Beer? Oh no, this is going to be a reoccurring joke in the movie, isn't it? <laughs> the broad's deaf. <laughs> yes, thank you, Captain Cowboy. The maestro is trying to steal Mrs. Rowling's priceless diamond necklace. Didn't she throw that into the wreckage of the Titanic? He gets his hat knocked off, which exposes his terrible haircut, so she takes off. Back in Dana's room, Ben and Shirley are meditating. Shirley pulls some earth fart nonsense and takes off all her clothes. This makes Ben very happy. This isn't an exact science, but I've often discovered if you can clearly see the whites above a person's pupils, that person is crazy. Shirley shows Ben the shrine to Baba Ramanana. He's enjoying where he thinks this is going. Meanwhile, Jack's on his date with Dana. Things seem to be going well for them. Although that can't be comfortable. Ben makes a move, but Shirley lets him know that's forbidden. And he has to keep chanting while she goes to repurify herself. Oh, at this point, why doesn't he just leave? Please. Let me screw her. Alright, now I hate him. Gonna be late for the date with the really friendly waitress at 11.30 because he's too busy trying to have sex with the crazy girl he just met. Mrs. Rowlings is headed back to her room. Oh, no. Ben thinks it's Shirley and gets chased out of the room. She now has a terrible headache. Oh no. Ben's trying to get to his room, but of course is chased by Reeves. He hides under a dinner cart, which of course is delivered to the maestro. Bobby Sue joins him and oh my god, what is she wearing? The maestro gets in the bath and Ben tries to escape. He sees Reeves coming, so naturally he hides in the dumbest place possible. It's peek a booby time. Somehow I feel that everyone involved would really like this film to be burned. Ben escapes back to his room. Patty's sad because she's been stood up, so she accepts a ride from her jerky boss. Ben gets there just in time as they leave. This wouldn't have happened if you weren't trying to roofie the crazy nudist Bob O'Reilly worshipping girl. The barber's putting on a uniform for some reason, and since Mrs. Rowlings is all hot to trot on Quaaludes, she makes an aggressive pass at him. I guess you could say she went across the street to, uh, schling a schlong. Bar? Jack finds Ben at the bar with Andrew Dice Clay? Oh, I'm sorry, Kurt. But pretty much Andrew Dice Clay. I'm over here now. His girlfriend's upset with him, so she says she's going back to her room with the first guy she runs into. Jack thinks that means it's open season. Somehow I don't think Johnny Depp was ever this desperate. Jack's trying to get the drunk girl back to his room. Kurt tells Ben he's going to take this other girl back to his room, so he panics and gives him the keys to his room. Now everyone is headed to the same room. They're on a collision course with wackiness. Kurt goes in the one bedroom with this girl while they try to sneak out with the other. Now oh, it's going to be nothing but this for the next 10 minutes, isn't it? Everyone runs into each other and it's a complete mess. I guess nothing happened because it just switches to the next day. Well, to be honest, this movie's already had enough chase scenes. Patty sees Ben and confronts him, although he spins it back to make her seem like the bad guy. Oh yeah, me. I, I was here. I, I saw you leave with that, that guy. Well, you were a half an hour late and I needed a ride. Believe me, I really wanted to go with you. Oh, now I hate him even more. Look, I don't like this guy either, but at least he's beating up Ben. No, 
Since Ben took a beating defending Patty's honor, the two go on a date montage. The maestro stops by Mrs. Rowling's room. He's given up trying to be stealthy and just tells her he's stealing the diamond. She, of course, knows Kung Fu. Did they only have it in their budget for one falling down sound? He pulls a gun and things get serious. Jack wakes up with Dana. Wait, did they have sex? Seems like kind of a big thing for them to gloss over, don't you think? What's the timeline now? Is this the next day or a few days since the Kurt incident? Patty shows up with some room service. She sees Dana and flips out, thinking he's with another girl. Let me explain! Just leave me alone, okay? All he had to say was simple. That's the girl my roommate is seeing. Ugh. This whole movie is like an extended episode of Three's Company. The maestro sees Ben, and what else? Chases after him. Couldn't have the movie end without another chase sequence, or 50. Ben hides in a room with some models. The maestro follows him in. Ben puts on a disguise, which makes the maestro all hot and bothered. Bobby Sue's waiting in a cab. Jeez, even the cab driver's a sleaze. Ben escapes, but gets trapped in an elevator with the maestro and Kurt. The hell is going on? Why is every guy in this either incompetent or a walking erection, or both? The maestro gets rid of Kurt. He tries to give the girl the necklace, but realizes it's Ben who runs away. This guy's supposed to be some great professional thief, and he's not picking up on the fact that the model he's ogling has chest hair. Ben meets up with Jack, and now they both run away. They push the maestro into a room with some sumo wrestlers, because eh, why not? He then gets a bucket kicked on him, which is hilarious to some Asian tourists. Any more stereotypes you want to throw in here, movie? The maestro chases Ben into the ladies' room, where the gym instructor gives him a good beating. I'm sure this is someone's fetish. They get to the dining area and what? He's just been casually hiding a machine gun? He's shooting up the joint and Ben throws him off the balcony. Just then, Patty shows up. And Ben's stunt double falls off the ledge. The maestro captures them, but is foiled by this. So you captured the c- <laughs> Punk rock guy again. The police show up and go to arrest the guys. Shouldn't they be going after the guy with the machine gun? Mrs. Rowlings tells them the maestro stole the diamond and then gives him a good karate chop. That's not a pleasant sight. The next day, I guess? Mrs. Rowlings is with the punk rock guy. Jake's with Dana and Patty quit her job to go on vacation with Ben. They look for Shirley, who's meditating with this guy. Baby, if this isn't a happy body, then my name isn't Big Rick. The movie ends on, what else? A dick joke. I'm meditating, and you know that meditation is the most important thing in my life. <laughs> <laughs> the movie was filmed mostly in Key Largo, Florida. Private Resort was directed by George Bowers. His first movie was The Hearse for Crown International. After doing Body and Soul for Canon, he returned to Crown and directed one of their most successful movies, My Tutor. Private Resort was the last film he directed. He had a background as an editor, so when directing didn't work out, he fell back on those skills, which served him a lot better. He edited The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension, The Stepfather, Shoot to Kill, Sleeping with the Enemy, The Good Son, and Money Train. Sixteen years after Private Resort, he worked with Johnny Depp again when he edited From Hell. For a bad teen sex comedy? The cast is a bunch of recognizable names that all went on to much bigger things. In 1984, Johnny Depp was in his first film, A Nightmare on Elm Street. Private Resort was his first starring role. This was Rob Morrow's first film. There's rumor that now that Depp and Morrow are famous, Private Resort is a major embarrassment, and they vowed to hunt down and destroy every copy. When the movie first came out, Depp and Morrow were nobodies. They aren't even on the poster. However, years later, when Depp became one of the biggest stars in Hollywood, they redid the cover with this poorly photoshopped version. He doesn't look happy to be there. Emily Longstreth was Patty. She had a much bigger part here than she did in Star Crystal. She also seemed to be enjoying this much more. Hector Elizondo played the maestro, Dodie Goodman was Mrs. Rowlings, and Leslie Easterbrook was Bobby Sue. Sure, Hector Elizondo didn't enjoy all the crotch shots. Andrew Dice Clay was popping up in movies like this and Night Patrol as Andrew Clay. Just a few years after this, he sold out Madison Square Garden and was the biggest comedian in the world at the time. Private Resort was the third in the unofficial Private Trilogy. 1981's Private Lessons was a hit, 
as was 1983's private school. They thought they'd strike gold a third time with private resort, but no such luck. All three were produced by R. Ben Ephraim, who also produced the Mystery Science Theater 3000 favorite, Mitchell. Not one to give up on the private label, in 1993 he produced Private Lessons 2, and a year later he made Private Lessons another story. Private Resort is kind of a disaster. It's not so much that the comedy is dated, which is fine. Comedy is one of the hardest genres as far as longevity. It's more so the tone of it. I love 80s teen sex comedies, I grew up with them, but this one goes way beyond. Ben and Jack were just desperate. Not shy, awkward, or geeks looking for love, but failing like Larry Laffer. They were just creeps. Jack had a good thing with Dana, but couldn't wait five minutes, so he was trying to jump on Dice's really, really drunk girlfriend. Ben already had a date lined up with Patty, but was still trying to sleep with the out of her mind Shirley. And after he stands her up, he makes Patty apologize. On top of that is the editing. Makes it feel like big chunks of the movie is missing. Reeves has a black eye that appears and disappears throughout the movie. Day one, Kurt's at the bar making out with this girl. Then several days later, his girlfriend yells at him, saying it's their first night there. I should have known, Kurt. Our first night here. And you're already hitting on other girls. They're even wearing the same outfits as they were on the first day. It looks like the Kurt segment was supposed to happen earlier, but was moved to the end. Then there's the weird edits like Kurt chasing the guys, only for it to cut to the next day. Or after Ben and Patty's date, we see Jack and Dana in bed together. It's not clear if this is the same day or if it was a few days later. Also, what do these guys do? They don't have a lot of money, but they're on vacation at this fancy resort. Then at the end, they're going on another vacation. Besides all that, isn't Mrs. Rowling's gonna karate chop Jack when she figures out he's not a 22-year-old doctor? Baby, if this isn't a happy body, then my name isn't Big Rick.